There's different ways to uh, expose uh, for a calcaneal fracture. Probably the most common is a hockey uh, stick type shaped incision that pretty much parallels the Achilles insertion and then is a plantar horizontal incision that tends to base up towards approximately the base of the fourth metatarsal. Uh, the things you need to worry about more distally, of course, is the sural nerve and the perineal tendons that will come into view. We're going to make this a fairly extensile view so that you can see in this uh, uh, demo. So we'll make that through. And again, it's very important that full thickness flaps are carried out in this approach. Uh, of course, healing is an issue with these fractures. And back around the turn, you want to go full thickness, right down to the bone, and really lift this right up off. The goal is to have the sural nerve and the perineal tendons in that soft tissue flap of full thickness. You can put a couple K wires in as uh, kind of self retractors, put those right up into the into the talus. You can actually use those and bend them up. And I use the driver to take that out for a second. And if you bend them up, it'll start holding your flap up. So there's one right there. I'll put another one up. So a combination of this and some hand retractors, and we'll be able to see pretty well. We'll go ahead and make a uh, calcaneal fracture. And oftentimes with the bone, we'll have bone deficits. Now, one trick I often use is that in order to get some control and actually to lever this down and get better visualization of the joint surface, put a chance... Uh, pin in the posterior body now, and you can always take it off if you need to, but this gives a really nice joystick to pull this down. And in this case, it'll open up my fracture site and uh, will actually help lever down to see the subtalar joint, which I can see very nice. If you have a, a deficit uh, from the cancellous bone being compressed from the injury, you can fill that uh, uh, gap with a cement such as Quickset. Uh, will give you very good subarticular support, and that's uh, something that can easily be done, and we'll show you that in a second. Another trick you can use is using a, a flexigraph sponge that is not hydrated. It's got a uh, uh, fairly firm uh, consistency to it, and it will actually you can wedge that in and hold your subarticular support in place while you put in your definitive fixation. Once that's in place, you have a few minutes to put on your definitive fixation before that will become hydrated and softer. So once you put it in, I'm just using an example. If I were to set this in, you can see that wedges in. That completely holds that area over. So if I had that in a subarticular area, it would hold my, my subarticular uh, deficit reduced, I could place my calcaneal plate over that. I do not have any K-wires or other fixation getting in the way of my definitive plate fixation. Now, the clock's running. I probably have four or five minutes uh, that that will uh, hold its support before it starts getting hydrated and getting softer. Now, what happens to that? Well, once you have placed on your plate, it just becomes bone graft. It has osteoinductive and osteoconductive properties, so it's a perfect thing to have uh, in that area to help uh, with the uh, bone healing. And now see, still, this sponge is still hard, so that would have done a very nice job of doing that. Quickset will set up. It will give you good support and subarticular support of your fragment as well, uh, and then you can place on a definitive fixation. So we're going to transfer the uh, uh, Solution over and mix the quick set. So I'm going to put the flexigraph sponge back in and give again. Now that gives excellent support of my fracture and kind of levers up and uh, hinges up that articular fragment where I want it. Now, now I've still got that that deficit in there, and I'd like to fill around that with something, and that's where I'll bring the quick set in. Now the quick set is now set. And we'll put uh, the needle on the syringe, and it'll be in a very workable uh, form. And it stays in this form uh, for approximately eight minutes. And you'll see as we move it in, it fills nicely into these gaps. And I can fill it right around this flexigraph sponge. When this hardens, this will give very nice support. Uh, and again, this is not meant for definitive support. This is meant at this point to fill the gaps and at a later time we'll, we'll fill those gaps 
and be replaced uh, with bone. So once it's filled around there, I can smooth it off with a little freer elevator. Finite fixation, I'll uh, use a calcaneal plate here now. I'll often get a size that I think fits, and oftentimes I'll take this and set an x-ray over it to see how it's fitting on there. Uh, I like to start with a couple of non locking screws that will bring my plate down to the bone. Once it's down to the bone, locking screws give excellent support, but locking screws will not allow you uh, to compress the plate against the bone. It will leave the plate wherever it's sitting, and I want it down on the bone so it's not prominent. So we'll drill right through. And again, something you can notice is my, uh, the pla this plate is designed and the, the angle of it is right underneath to support uh, the uh, subarticular region of the subtalar joint. Uh, this gives very nice fixation of those common fragments we see. So I've drilled one, and I'll start with one in the back side, and I'll measure that. And that's going to measure a 32. I'll then follow the hand driver. So now the plate is down uh, flush against the bone here. Now I'll generally move up and do another one at this time. Now what I'll often do here is I will get an x-ray because you can still rotate around this screw and make sure that I'm sitting in a nice position up on the uh, calcaneus more, more distal. And once I get this, I can still move it very nicely. Once I get it to where I want, I'll set it in. I'll put another non-locking screw up more proximally. And this second one will now bring the plate right up against calcaneus at that location. And now it's all the way down, all the way across it. And that there uh, measures a 34. So once I've got a couple non-locking screws on, um, I can go to locking uh, screws to give extra stability. Now there's a couple different ways you can uh, drill for your uh, variable angle locking screws. There's a couple different guides that will work. Uh, one is this uh, kind of a domed uh, guide and you can put that in. What that will do is allow you uh, just by setting it in to go within 15 degrees Anywhere throughout this dome is 15 degrees. So as you can see, this rotation will put you at different areas of 15 degrees. So it'll keep you true within that. Another option for like a little more stability is that dome also comes in one that screws into the plate. So that's screwed into the plate right there. And so I'll nicely be able to come down, put it, and I want to aim it up right about there. That's going to keep me within that 15 degree uh, uh, range. And I'll drill. And once it starts engaging, I will take the hand driver and actually thread it right into the plate. Okay, that's gi giving me very nice fixed angle uh, support right there in the plate. Another option is a placing a screw where that's got the uh, measuring guide uh, on the guide itself. And so I'll pound against the second cortex right there. I see about where we are. And that measures about 30, and I'll stop and now drop it through 32 it stopped at. So uh, I don't have to measure that. I know from the guide that it measured 32. Uh, I would use a combination, again, of locking and non-locking, depending on where I'm putting them. Again, the initial one should be non-locking. And once you have the plate down against calcaneus, you can go to locking. Once you put locking screws in, the, lock, the non-locking screws have less utility and that they will no longer compress the plate against the side of the bone. Uh, but I would continue here with a few more locking plates. Uh, you do not need to fill uh, every hole, but you want to get enough you get good support. And again, while we've done this, now we've got the quick set that's hardening. We've got that flexigraft that did a great job of holding our reduction, and now we don't need it anymore. It's going to now turn into a great bone graft with both osteoinductive and osteoconductive properties, while the quick set's going to give us uh, some additional space filling uh, that will again uh, get uh, replaced by bone in the healing process. Uh, if you look at these radiographs uh, here, what you're looking for is the subtalar joint is reduced, Bowler's angle has been restored, and the plate fits anatomically over the lateral border of the calcaneus. We have very nice uh, subarticular support uh, of the middle facet of the subtalar joint.